my name is Pam Berry. I own the Gettysburg Ghost Exchange, the largest paranormal store in Gettysburg, your one-stop ghost shop. And how did you get involved in the paranormal community? Well, my grandmother um, was Native American, and we would sit around, and we would either have seances or we would play on our Ouija board, which I got a new one every year for Christmas. Why do you think Gettysburg is such a active and, I guess, haunted um, town? I think because a lot of the young men were not ready to die. Although they were heroic and on both sides, the gray and the blue, um, they were here for a mission for a cause. Um, we did get an EVP the one time um, near the Baltimore Pike. We had said, um, along with our questions, do you know that the South lost the war? And the, on our recorder, we got, we won, wow. And the, just hearing his voice, he was human. He had that feeling and he was elated to know that his death probably meant something to our country. Jenny Wade, one of my favorite, favorite investigations of all time. So we're very good friends with the owners and Steve and I took Blue Star along with Joe and Karen and went through to actually trace where her body, the journey of her body after she um, was killed. She was the only civilian killed here in Gettysburg. Um, so we started in the basement. We knew that the kitchen floor was replaced so we went underneath of the kitchen onto the long beams we got nothing so we moved up uh, disregarded the kitchen area because like I said that was replaced went up on her side at the top of the um, stairs we found little blood spots boom 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 and then probably about six to eight inches then we found blood smear um, you can almost actually see where a part of her shoulders were. They let her lay there in that area right above the kitchen, went and proceeded to break out the hole that was um, in there by a mortar, and then they took her body through that hole. That being said, we also found some blood remains down along the bricks as you're stepping through. And then quite frankly, we kind of stopped because we were really overtaken with emotion. And really in that few seconds, Jenny Wade became that 20 year old young girl. So sometimes that her stories romanticized, you know, you can stick your ring finger through the hole that killed her and supposedly people get engaged. We wanted to go beyond that. We wanted to find the true history of her and just to be able to pay her respect. And when we're investigating, now we can say, Jenny, we know that you were here. Jenny, are you here with us? And just pay her that respect. I feel like the history of buildings, in my mind, really should be investigated so that we can know the history behind the haunt. That's how I, want, that's how I step into an investigation. And what has been your personal experiences at Jenny Wade House? We've gotten EVPs right where her body was. Um, there's a chain that will rock back and forth. We get tremendous amount of EVPs in the basement. All right guys, we're gonna head upstairs. There's Eric, her guide. Don't mind the very bright light. No, that's fine. <laughs> Just be careful when you go up the steps. Yep. This house belonged to Jenny's sister. So, when she was killed downstairs, they brought her body up the steps, laid her down for a bit here, and brought her through here. Now, originally, there was a hole in the wall from a shelling. Um, that shelling came through the house, through the wall, and left a pretty decent sized hole. Of course, since then, they've kind of Demolished it a little bit, well, by a lot. And they have a little 
cool looking doorway basically into the next part of the house. Now these floors are their original floors. From over a hundred years ago, which is crazy. Um, it's nuts. Now we're, we're gonna go down, we're gonna follow the footsteps basically of where they brought Jenny's body. And they brought her body down to the basement, which will go down there in a little bit. This is Marianne Wade. She was the mother of Jenny Wade. Now Jenny's original birth name is actually Mary Virginia Wade. But she went by Jenny Wade. The chain is still moving a little bit. The chain is still moving a little bit. So if there's anyone up here with me right now, and you want to make yourself known, I put a ball there and a ball there. And when you touch one of them, or when you touch both, they light up and make fun colors. So feel free to touch one of those balls and make them light up. If there's anyone here with me at all, I should say. Here it is. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you. That was awesome. <laughs> can you can you do that one more time for me? Make that ball light up, please. You gotta touch the ball one more time. That's all you gotta do. <gasps> Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's awesome. Thank you. That's crazy. <laughs> Thank you. So we're gonna keep walking. Wow, okay. So anyway, they brought her through this part of the house down here and the reason they brought her Jesus fucking Christ the reason they brought her down this part of the house sorry I'm like distracted here oh my god I keep thinking I'm hearing things so the reason they brought her down to this part of the house I can hear the EVP. I can hear Danny and Bill investigating downstairs. That's okay. So, like I was saying, they brought her body down to this part of the house because it was safer. Um, it was safer to avoid any other bullets or gunfire from the Confederates. Um, but yeah. Now, they brought her out the door here down to the basement, which we'll go to in a little bit. Now, this clock right here was actually here during the Battle of Gettysburg. So this clock has been a while. It's been here for a while, and it has seen better days. Um, but it's so cool that that clock was here. Like it's, yeah, it was on this mantle, even to the sign. It says it belonged to the McLean family, which was the family on the side of the house. And like I mentioned before, upstairs, the hole in the wall, which is now a doorway basically, um, when there was some severe and excessive shelling going on during the battle, one of the shells came and struck this house. 
and knocked a big old hole in the wall, and that's the shell. And this was found inside the house, I think, 15 years after the battle. I believe that's the, the story. And this... This right here is one of the... So upstairs, the flooring is original. Downstairs, on the first floor, it's not original. However, this right here is uh, one of the original floorboards where Jenny lied on and died after she was shot through the back. Now, you can see some darker spots on the board itself. Um, that's, um, well, blood stains, essentially. I think it was her sister that wrote on the board. Um, yeah, it even says, um, a uh, board from uh, uh, Jenna Wade fell when shot. Um, I think her sister is the one who wrote on this board. Um, yeah, crazy. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, she died on the, the last day of the battle. And apparently she came all the way from church and made her way without getting hurt or injured or shot um, until she came back to her sister's house, which is what we're in right now. I know that her father's there because he did not have closure. He was actually in um, Eastern State when Jenny was killed. He came here. Um, he lived at the Alms House, so he would journey down to the Jenny Wade House, what we know as the Jenny Wade House today, um, which was actually her sister George's house. Um, and every day he would be going, looking for Jenny, and they would try to redirect him and say, you know, Jenny's dead, Jenny was killed. But he never had that closure. So if you go into Jenny Wade, if you're lucky enough to be able to go and investigate, uh, make sure you go into the basement and see if Mr. Wade's there. All right, so we got Bill down here. Let me turn this up real quick. And we got Danny right over there. And... Where I was sitting, it'll be fine, right? Let me turn this up a little bit. Would you kind of just do this? I tell you, if this freaking mural goes off, though, I'm going to poop. Here we go. So, Mr. Wade, we're all down here together now. If you have anything to say to us, feel free to do so. Let us know that you're here with us. Or if anyone else is here, please let us know your name. Feel free to touch any of the devices that we have down here. Some of them will make noise, most of them will light up. Now I'm feeling kind of lonely. There's a seat right next to me. Do you mind sitting in it? We could chat. If you were here during the battle, how long did you have to stay down here? I bet it was very frightening for you. I'm sorry you had to deal with that. Okay, spirits, we're going to play a little game called the number game. We're going to start counting. So I'll start and then Danny, and then Lawrence, and then it's your turn, okay? And we're gonna go up to 20. So I'm gonna leave the recorder right here. All right, you ready for the number game? One. Two. Three. Five. Six. Seven. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. All right, thank you. We're going to play one more game, and we're going to go through the alphabet. All right? Same rules. Ready? A. B. C. E. F. G. I. J. K. 
M. N. O. <laughs> I thought you skipped L. I thought I thought I was gonna fuck up messed, messed up L, but I'm like, oh wait, we're leaving the L to the okay. <laughs> okay. Q. R. U. No, S. 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 S, S sorry. <laughs> I'm nervous, S. Okay. U. B. W. Y. Z. Well, that was like a kindergarten Z. <laughs> That's very funny. It's good to know that Lawrence doesn't know his ABC. <laughs> can scream as loud as you want tell us your name tell us whatever you want to whatever you want to say to be honest with you you can bang on the walls knock over our equipment whatever you want to do are you able to move a bench That sounds like something upstairs. Right? That sounds like walking. Mm-hmm. It's not Eric at all, is it? I was it? gonna say we're too early for him to be giving us the warning yet. Is he that should, he should be on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just sit in there. Is that you up there? is the property outside of Gettysburg that had the most Confederate soldiers and generals on the property um, than any other piece of property here in and around Gettysburg. Um, General Lee did not sleep in the house, but Jeb Stewart did. Jeb Stewart was in the Jeb Stewart room. Um, he had syphilis, so he was um, in there because of his illness. The other generals all stayed outside with their men. All right, guys, so we are here at the Cash Town Inn. Now, Danny and Robert are downstairs in the basement with Jeremy, the co-owner of the Cash Town Inn, and his wife, Danielle, is in the other room talking to one of the other guests. So you're going to hear some noise pollution a little bit, hopefully not too much. Uh, we're we're going to go upstairs and kind of hang out, give you guys a tour of the place, a walkthrough. And, yeah, they are very, very loud. Okay. 
This place is absolutely beautiful. Now, when the movie Gettysburg was filmed in Gettysburg, actor Sam Elliott actually stayed here at the Cash Town Inn. And there he is. Sam Elliott. The man. Got a little Cash Town right there. We're gonna go up to the second floor. Now, there are three floors to this place. The other guest is staying up there. Uh, I think his mother is up there right now, resting, pretty sure, while he's downstairs talking to one of the co owners. Now, we were up here before, uh, Rob, Danny, and myself. We were doing an EVP session in Danny's room, which is the AEP Hill room. And we got some interesting EVPs, to say the least. This is Danny's room right here, and I'm staying in the room four, Major General Heath, or Heth. I think it's pronounced Heth. But this is my room right here. Now, my friend Pam was telling me that when she stayed here, I'll turn my light on real quick here. Pam mentioned that she usually stays in this room when she visits the Cash Town Inn. And she mentioned that this bear was sitting right here. Just chilling, doing its thing. And then she left. And when she came back, the bear was on the bed. Which is interesting. This is the bathroom right here. It's just the bathroom. Got a shower. Nothing too fancy. And this is the AP Heller room. Now we got a cat motion ball on the bed and over there on the couch with the doll. Danny actually got this doll from a uh, antique shop uh, in, a, in a town not too far from here. But you got a motion ball that's kind of hanging out on his lap. I'm gonna close this door because noise really does bleed through these walls as you can hear. Now, the, re the reports in this room are, well, they range from different kinds of uh, paranormal activity, such as disembodied voices, stuff moving around in here. It's a very interesting place, though. I'm going to turn the light off real quick. There we go. Now we're in the dark. Well, kind of. I got my camera light.
So we have two, uh, two balls and two balls that light up. It is weird saying we have two balls, but we had a ball there on the bed and we have a ball there on the couch with a doll. Those balls do light up. Now, if there is someone here with me, can you make that ball, one of the balls light up please? Now, I know there was someone here earlier tonight. We heard you. We heard your voice. We know you're here with us. Wow, I can definitely hear that guy downstairs, which I think is the other guest, um, just in the parlor bar area, just talking away. Now, there's someone here with me. You can definitely make that ball on the bed light up. Or the one on the couch. Or, we kind of have a REM pod here. So we touch this thing. It makes a fun, wacky noise. Are there any Confederate soldiers in this room? Are there any Confederate soldiers in this building? That want to make yourselves known? I'm going to try going upstairs real quick. All right, I'm leaving. Okay. This is my room. That's the third floor. One of the other guests is his mother's up there. Just probably in bed if you want to go interrupt her at all but this is a very historic location this was the confederate hangout the confederate headquarters during the battle of gettysburg and to the best of my knowledge they wanted the fighting to take place up here because this little town this inn is right outside gettysburg maybe about Ooh, maybe 10 minutes? Not even outside the town of Gettysburg. But as we all know, the fighting took place in the town and in the battlefields of Gettysburg. So the basement was used as... Um a place where they were doing surgery. They were using the little, the water that runs through the bottom. It's a French drain, but it's probably about three feet. Um, they were using that to rinse off their, their surgeon utensils and their hands. Um, there's a, a window there that the arms and legs were kind of piled up. Um, it also was a hearth. There's two hearths down there that they used to bake their breads. So again, we kind of just step back into the history and try to feel kind of what the nurses or doctors. Um, we, it's kind of disorganized chaos in that basement. All right, guys, we are making our way down to the basement. Rob and Danny and Jeremy. Jeremy's the other owner. He's upstairs as well. Um, ideally, the noise pollution upstairs should be kept to a minimum. The basement of this place is extremely significant. Got a motion ball right there, so that should go off. Now, when I came down here, oh, first off, we have a laser grid right over there. The idea. Oh, 
Oh, I fucking hate this. Okay. All right, pipes, relax. These pipes are gonna be the death of me because they're gonna make so many weird noises. Anyway, the idea behind that laser grid is uh, if something walks in front of it, you can see the light on the wall over there. Um, it's pretty common sense. Someone walks in front of the light, it will black it out. So there's a stream nearby um, and that stream kind of goes under the house. So there's running water <laughs> under this house throughout the basement. The motion ball right there. Apparently this motion ball went off right before they went upstairs. But you can see this water. Now, why is this significant? Well, I'll tell you why. During the Battle of Gettysburg, I keep thinking there's someone behind me, but I know there's not. During the three-day battle of Gettysburg, the Confederates who were wounded would have their limbs amputated. And the blades would be washed off in this water. So this water would be blood red. A lot of horrible things, a lot of pain and misery took place down here in this basement. Is anyone down here with me? Ow, that was me. Step. Man. Does it look very comfy? I've heard stories of a young child. If you're down here, you can let me know. You want to say something? You want to whisper? I don't mind if you whisper. You can. Why do I feel like I just heard a whisper? I swear to God, I thought I heard a whisper. <laughs> I think I'm losing my mind. I'm Rod Stakowitz. I own Get Haunted. We are a paranormal events and services company, uh, and we, we created a, a whole network of paranormal enthusiasts. 
you know, for me, I've lived in, in Pennsylvania for about 17 years now, and yeah, I was disappointed in myself for not coming to Gettysburg sooner. It's a magical place. Um, it's totally different than anywhere else I've really been, where you literally, the history here is palpable. Like, when you drive into town, you can feel it. And what do you think makes Gettysburg as active as it is? You know, it, if you go by the traditional theories of, you know, energy left behind by trauma or big events such as the Civil War, um, that's probably part of it. Uh, but there has to be more to it. I don't think it's just that. It might be something with the land. It might be something uh, with the magnetic poles or, or the magnetic fields around here. I don't know. I think there's more to it, but it certainly is a place with a whole lot of history and a whole lot of trauma. Um, it's just fascinating. I wish I knew exactly what made Gettysburg so haunted. Okay, so Danny's in that creepy little room there um, using Hello? an SB7 spirit box. Uh, what we're doing is called the Estes Method. So she has headphones on, she can't see us. And we're going to ask questions and we'll see what she responds with. So the SB7 sweeps through radio stations and she should be able to pick out words. It was like a hum. Can you tell Danny your name, please? I got it. What did you get? Hello? Hi. Hello. What's your name? That's right. What's right? Something I couldn't make it out. What year is it? You know? I don't know, that's why I'm asking. Do you want to spring? My mom? Your, do you want to spring your gifts or something? Do you miss your mom? When was the last time you saw your mother? Something I couldn't catch. You? What about us? Help me. How can we help you? Hear me? What's your message? Hello? How can we help oh, you? Fuck, that sounded like a dragon sound. I don't know how to explain <laughs> that. What did you say? It's like a dragon sound. Yeah, right? 
How can we help you? Uh, sound like help. How? Tell us. What's four plus three? You. Close. Who do you need help from? Do you know what state you're in? <gasps> sure. Oh my god, okay. What? What happened? You okay? Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Oh my god, that sounded like a cry. That's okay. <sighs> Okay, I got this. No, no, no. This is like a little kid, right? <sighs> Danny heard you and she feels bad, so is there anything you want to say to help make her feel better? I'm sorry if my reaction scared you. If you really do need help, can you please let us know? But you have to tell us what you need. What did he do? What just happened? Did you feel something? Saw something. What did you see? Black, a black shadow. Like the, the height we were seeing earlier? Like No, he came across the floor though. And I, but it's not him. It was shaped though, like kind of like a head. Like right. something kind of peeked through? Like this, but it came this way. Like a kid is I thought by. it was you. Totally, I don't know, man. Oh. Alright, just hold still. Alright, so so listen, spirit. Yeah, we're all kind of on edge here. Thank you for talking to us. Just know you're not forgotten and we're here to here to talk to you and we'll be coming back more. Nothing happening with this recording. Do you want to say goodbye before we go upstairs? Thank you for talking with us. Thank you. You want to say one more? Anything? Let's see. Please help me. Please help me. No way. Yeah.
Oh, I have the worst, I have the craziest chills right now. You okay, Dan? <laughs> we hope so. Listen, they, we don't know, right? They know we can hear them. They can hear us. They're asking for help. Oh. Thank you for talking to us. No, you're not forgotten, and we're here to talk to you. We'll be coming back more. That's me. Do you want to say goodbye before we go upstairs? Dan, don't, don't let it get to you. This is part of what we do. I know. It's just What do you know about the Farnsworth house? Farnsworth, before I moved to Gettysburg, this was the first place that I stayed. So that being said, it does hold um, a little piece of my heart. We always stay in the Sweeney room. Um, there's a room right next to where we're at that something grabbed my, the bottom of my leg, um, kind of like a child, um, right outside the Jeremy's room. So it was kind of trying to get my attention and tapping my legs. Also in the attic, a lot of EVPs in the attic. Stairwell. Um, if you put um, like a, a motion detector on the bottom of the stairs, the top of the stairs, they will go off as if somebody's coming or going. All right. All right. So, Rob, what do you uh, what do you have with us uh, tonight? Well, I brought a bunch of stuff, but tonight I think we'll start with um, this is a FLIR or FLIR, depending on how you pronounce it. Thermal imaging camera uh, basically picks up heat signatures or cold signatures. You should be able to see my hand pretty good. Nice. Um, cool way to see if somebody or something has been in the area. One of my favorite tools here is the real-time EVP, um, super sensitive microphone. You put the headphones on and you can sit and listen and hear EVPs as they happen, which oddly enough, um, we had a disembodied voice earlier. Mine or get out? It's one of them. What do you guys oh, think? Oh, we heard it. Yeah. Like, just before we went out uh, for coffee. It was pretty pretty cool. And then I have one of Empty Casket, uh, a.k.a. Bill. Bill's little rip, uh, REM pods. He makes amazing equipment, super sensitive. So we'll have this out, see if we can get anything to trigger it. Did bring a couple trigger, op uh, tri trigger objects, a little car for... Maybe we can get Jeremy to play with it. Um, and then I got a whole case of K2 meters and things like that. Oh, and I did bring my my favorite EVP recorder, the DR60, which and that's where we caught the EVP earlier tonight, yes, right? That's correct. So that's great. That's kind of the holy grail of recorders for some people, and uh, works really well for me, at least. That's it. We'll see what we capture tonight. And it's your first time here, and already we got an EVP. First time here, and it was more than an EVP. It was an actual disembodied voice. Um, I was standing in Jeremy's room talking to Danny, and we heard something behind us. Uh, we were recording, thank God. Heard something behind us, and I thought maybe it was you, Lawrence. And um, So we just moved on with the EVP session, and then when we played it back, Got the voice that you um, 
that you heard, and it's basically saying, uh, get out to an answer, to a question that we asked was, whose room this was. It was pretty interesting, but we literally heard it with our own ears, which is like, pretty rare. Just let us know. You can talk. You can speak right into this, um, this device in my hand with the red light. I'm not going to ask you a whole lot of questions tonight, um, at least in the beginning of the night. I do want to tell you that there's a little toy car that I brought along for Jeremy. It's sitting on my nightstand over here. And he can keep it. It's all, it's all his. If you pull it backwards and let go, the car will move by itself. So if you're here with us, can you do me a favor, just one favor, and then I'll leave you alone for a little while. Can you repeat the word pineapple? Let's see. I'm excited there, Rob. <laughs> I heard something. Yeah. It's like three words. What was that? That's me walking. Okay. I hear something in my car. It? You heard it? Yes. Oh, God, this thing has juice. It's like the end of... Jeremy. Wait. Can, can you do that one more time? Can you go back one more time? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to slow it down more. Jeremy, I heard that too. Yeah, that, you hear that? A woman's voice. No. And then... Listen again. Wow. Listen. But does the woman's voice say, who is that? Mike. Oh. 
So there's Jeremy. The female voice might have been you coming in. Because it's not there. Because I was walking through. Yeah, it could yeah. be you. So we'll dismiss that part. Yeah. I hear Jeremy. Definitely I hear red Jeremy. light. I heard the red light, too. You hear that? I did. Okay, good. Because I think I'm not wow. sometimes. All right, let's keep going. Motion is making it seem more dramatic. Faint whisper there. Him. It's not him. So we got a th we got some weird stuff on that one right in the beginning. Then a thank you, right? Yes, I heard the thank you. Hit the Jeremy. Very Jeremy. Faint There's Jeremy. the Jeremy. Fucking clear. Oh my god. Why do you think this particular building is very active? I think because it holds the history of Gettysburg. It was here during the battle. The, I mean, think about it. The battle was raging around it. Um, I think spaces, places, and souls just hold the history and the vibration of things that happen. All right. So we got equipment set up throughout the, Everywhere. the house. We got a, uh, oh my God, let me just do a quick tour here. Oh, got a REM pod there. Got motion sensors over there. Hey Jeremy, my name is Julie. Was just wondering if you like cats. We have one here in the hallway you can go up to and pet. You can play with it. Hi Jeremy, my name's Rob. This is my first visit here. I'm looking forward to getting to know you. If you don't know, it's hard for us to see you or hear you, so if 
you could make a sound or tap on something or whistle, then we'll know you're here. Jeremy, I've been here before last year. Do you remember me? My friend Michelle and I came in this room without knowing uh, the door was unlocked. I thought I heard a noise. What did you, you hear? Yeah. Like a, a tap or a, a, maybe a footstep? A footstep would be more like it because it was a, more like a creak. Like a creak on the floor. Okay. I down, heard it again. Down that way. Come on down, please. But I'm also hearing a clicking noise that's steady, so that's a, but it was different. Right, the clicking noise is probably, what kind of baseboard heat, what this kind of heat is like there? registers? Yeah, the registers. So that could be that, but the other part was a creak, more like a mm -hmm. footstep. Can you come in here with us? Jeremy, if you're with us, can you tell us what's your favorite game? That's my alarm, sorry. That wasn't you, Jeremy, we know. That was Mr. <laughs> Rob's alarm to take out the garbage. <laughs> <laughs> You finish this for me? Okay. Did you hear that? Yes. I heard that. Yeah, okay. I heard right. that. I heard that. But that what? Be, Shut yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> but do me a favor, because sometimes voices yeah. can set that off. Hey. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. One, two. Hey. Woo. Clap. <laughs> well, that, that, that was good. good. That debunked that. I mean, but you heard they, that? They, oh, I heard that. Absolutely. It was so, yes. yeah. That was so clear. That was very clear. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. I'm going to get away from the window yeah. because I, the cars are loud. So many little things that you can play with, Jeremy, out there. All kinds of toys. The cat is up on the third, or on the third floor step. I guess I should have brought it a little bit closer. It's cold out here. None of these things will hurt you. They're actually fun to play with. They'll light up different colors. Some of them will make noise. But we brought them for you to play with. You know, like <gasps> Rob. I heard it. Is that nothing? I heard some kind of noise. I thought I heard you. <laughs> I thought I heard a knock. Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I was listening to you walk to make sure that it wasn't walking, and then I heard a noise. But it was like this, right? It was like... Yes. Yeah. Oh, that was it. Well, that was it. Yeah, that, that's what I was saying. <laughs> hey, Jeremy, like, that was really, really fun. And you saw the reaction that we had. And, uh, can we try that one more time, please, just so we know? That 100% that you're doing this, right? Let's try that one more time. I'll start and you finish, okay? There's one? Yeah, I heard one, yeah. There's only one. Okay, uh, that's good. That's it. I know it's hard. There. Oh, there was a second one. It's right behind yeah. me. Yeah. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. So I think you may already know, but I brought you a toy. There's a little car. It's by the stairs near my room. And if you, well, that was me. Okay. And if you pull it backwards, it goes forward automatically it's like magic um i have it set up right now that if you just move the car a little bit it'll go forward 
I'll comment out there. What was that? What is that? What is that? What is that again? What is that again? That sounded like something out in the hallway to me. What did it sound like to you guys? Was it? I wasn't moving. And he's not moving. Yeah, he's he's totally still. What happened twice? Yeah. Yeah. Jeremy, was that you? Oh, was that the car? What kind of noise does the car make? Like, oh, okay. That would be funny. Do we have a, a, a date? I wonder. Of when he passed? Oh. His story is kind of a mystery. Okay. Well, we know he was horse and buggy, kind of? That's the story, yes. And so, then he was... So after cars were invented? Or before cars were invented? Uh, I would assume so. <laughs> uh, then like he... 1970 ish 1970. <laughs> I would say maybe 1988 to be exact. Um, but the story is that he passed away in um, Rob. Rob's room. Oh, yeah. okay. There's a, I believe, a photo of him on the wall, and Sarah's high school diploma, which is crazy. Oh wow! Oh, wow. wow. Interesting. I found my parents' is really weird. Really weird. For me, the paranormal is, you know, by definition, things we can't explain. I do think there's a much bigger story than just ghosts and spirits and things that go bump in the night. I believe that it's all part of this big universal thing that we're all part of. Um, so for me, the, the fascinating part is really trying to break through piece by piece to get a better understanding of exactly what paranormal truly is. Rob? What? Did you go up to the attic door at all? Rob in the bathroom? No, what? <laughs> huh? Are you sitting on the it, shitter? You didn't go. No, why? Oh. What happened? Can I sit in the tub? Is that weird the, if I sit in the tub? The uh, light oh, trigger is showing awesome. eight events. The light trigger up there is showing Whoa, eight events. Oh, so that means something walked by eight, eight times? Eight times. <gasps> eight times there was an event. I swear to God, I never even went up So there. nobody was up there. No. Oh. That means something Something hit it went wide, like this eight times broke or whatever. Bro broke the stream eight from times. From the laser grid to the light trigger. Something Ooh. interrupted that eight times. Jumps, jumped, weeps, and then cause and slight. So who wants to explain this device that I'm looking at here? That's the ovulus. Okay. And the theory is that um, Danny, I'm gonna give you this. spirits can manipulate the One word database to, to right spit now. out different words. Um, my understanding is there's like about 4,000 words, no proper names, although we've had proper names come up many there, times. There are a few proper names, but not, if it said Mildred, you know, if there's no Mildred in there, there might be a John right. or a Steve, but it's not going to be unique, unique names. Right. No. If it goes and says something like Zachariah or something. What did it say? Or Obadiah. Form. <laughs> Do you want to so start hear this? A little delay. Delay. You, should, you may hear it. So I'm going to leave this out. So you know, it's clear, clear Crossover. <laughs> Crossover. Oh, whoa. Interesting. Okay. I'm going to turn this so you can see it with the camera. That's interesting. Oh, I'm just looking for something. Any spirits here with us? We're here in Sarah Black's room. What was that? The speaker. That was my okay, speaker. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sarah, are you here? Are there any spirits here with us tonight? My name's Julie, and this is the first time I've stayed here. I would really like to get to know you. What the hell? That's Rob's speaker. Is someone knocking out there? It's my speaker. It's Rob's speaker. Oh, okay. <clears throat> is there someone in this room with us tonight? It says puncture. All right, Spirit, Jeremy, Sarah, whoever's here, jump in the walls. 
I need your help, please. So I'm getting old and I can't remember things anymore. So I'm going to count numbers. And I hope you can fill in the blanks for me. All right, I'm going to start counting now. Please help me remember these numbers. One, two, three, five, six, eight, nine, ten, If you answered, thank you. No, I feel weird. I feel weird. Weird how? Like their hair. So my friend Danny's sitting in the tub in there. Can you go say hi to Danny? Can you hum to her? I heard a beep. Is it a tap or a beep? Can you go give Danny a poke? Where's the toy cannon? Somebody lose a toy cannon in here? Would you like me to put it back in the drawer? Did Danny just say something? Mm -hmm. I heard a I whisper. Did, I did not say anything. I did hear a whisper. Was that? Uh -huh. I didn't. You heard it? Would have been her headset now, but now that it's in her ears? No, it wasn't that. That was... I didn't know what it said, I just heard a whisper. Yeah, I heard something. From that direction? Yeah, from in there. Yeah. Are you in the bathroom with Danny? If you are, can you make a tapping noise? Or maybe you could push the door closed? Or move the shower curtain? Alright, I'm going to play this recording back now. Hopefully we hear your voice. So I want to say thank you. I just want to make sure. What the f- Are you on? What happened? What happened? I think I felt a tug and I don't. Is there any? I need a light. That actually scared the shit. Was that a tug? It, like my hoodie, like, boop. and I'm like, am I hooked on? Is it what hooks back here? Was it the faucet? Interesting. I'm sitting right here and it was like someone just yeah. pulled down on my hoodie. Well, we said to give you a poke. I think Gettysburg is so active because of everything that has happened here. You know, there are impressions that, that are left behind. A lot of trauma, um, lots of death, lots of emotion involved with everything around the Civil War. So that imprint, I have a feeling, is stuck here for now and probably forever. If you could tell something to the spirits of Gettysburg, what would it be? Thank you. Thank you.